If Eden Were a Woman by Junia Genevieve Janvier. I close my eyes and imagine the first appearance of creation. Did we have then any small hint of the creator's ethereality? As time passed, did we grow a little further away? Are we carbon copies of him or her? What image do I claim when I've been claimed by man already? And Eve to Adam? I picture Adam before Eve, alone, guideless, no essence or real being. He slumps against the forbidden tree, already enraptured in its branches, enraptured in its branches like the tactician of Ithaca was enraptured by Circe. I picture Adam lamenting to the creator, begging for a companion, a lover, or an object of lust ready beside him, like a glass of water left by a child's bedside so that they may drink, drink. In this fashion, Eve was brought forth to be always giving, a nurturer, cursed before temptation to yield to man, always a commodity. I see them, the creator, pondering as the sun begins to set, them them. A singular and a duality set forth out of what I presume to be a fireball of magical power. They ponder and then they pry out one of Adam's ribs. They pry out one of Adam's ribs. An image simulating violence against beautiful self, as if Eve were a force to be reckoned with, one neither creator nor Adam had anticipated then molding the bloodied bone like gentle clay. They brought forth a hand, a leg, a mind, a heart. And there she stood on her own, Eve, Eve. Eve, the beginning and our end, Eve. And then immediately, as if she were too much for creation, Adam latched her to his side, her wholeness reduced to his halfness, consumed into manhood for the rest of time. With no understanding of why my lineage is attached to the men in my life, I am Junia Janvier, never simple. Although mother is all I have, all I know, and all that I am, Imagine Eve with only Adam to call lineage, her first family, cursed before temptation and mortality. Now envision Eden, a garden of perfection, a place of dreams, and now a place commemorated only by her tasting of forbidden fruit, by her hope of standing equal under divinity. Did Eden weep? as Jesus later did, seeing her sisterhood doomed for having been tempted by those branches? Did Eden condemn her condemnation for wishing to be wise and daring to act on it? Eve stood as Shamhat stood, enlightening a savage Enkidu, the untamed self brought by right into civilization. Or is Eve Eden, the original woman, the original mother? That's it. Her fruit and fruitfulness denied to man, and as a consequence, her landscape subject to subjection to nature's grazing until the end of time. Is Eden the allegory for keeping women down? Is Eden Penelope waiting, wilting? Is Eden Ishtar, the goddess, seeking worship in Uruk? Is Eden Circe, the sorceress, seeking power from no one but herself. Is Eden me? Am I two thousands of years later doomed to nurture without being nurtured myself? My flesh, soil, my tears to water. Did my mother cry for me too? Did her tears summon me into existence? If Eden is me, am I her? When Adam and Eve were cast out, I wonder if Eden was relieved her gates shut. She might then have kept her fruit for herself, for her own reasons, untouched by man or corruption. If Eden were a woman, is there hope for me, for us?
Now let's say Eden is a black woman, commodified, used, a glass of water by the bedside left so that they may drink, drink, a glass never fulfilled, but somehow always expected to be full. Will my edges, my essence, my soul be ever looked into rather than through? Will I ever be no longer an oppressed intersection of gender and hue? When will I be...